the opportunity to present our work and you know, we blog and you know there are a lot of people blogging there are a lot of people writing automations nowadays and if you see the twitter and linkedin it's like exploding like you know every second somebody is posting something so these meetups you know gives opportunity people like us uh, to, to showcase our work and uh, thank you so much for that uh, a little introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Arundh Mitra, and I have overall of uh, 16 years of experience in, in information technology. I started uh, as a, a data center uh, specialist, and I worked in data center and all technologies, uh, and perhaps Cisco, Linux, Windows, you name it, and I have worked on it um, for close to 10, 10, 11 years, and then I slowly moved into cloud. I started working with AWS for it for a year, and then I switched to um, Azure. So I'm now close to five years uh, working in Azure. I started with assessment and lift and shift, and then I slowly moved into, uh, into Azure, and then I slowly moved into infrastructure as a code, DevOps. And now currently I am working as an Azure Cloud Solution and DevOps Architect in Axpo Solutions in Switzerland. Um, I normally blog uh, uh, mostly about DevOps. I uh, in a way, you can say that I love to automate things as much as possible, wherever it is possible. I, I like to explore more. So I normally specialize in Azure DevOps, GitHub Actions, um, PowerShell, AZCLI, Terraform. So these are my core areas. And uh, with all the projects which I have worked, I have right now uh, worked on 50 or 52 Azure services overall. So. <clears throat> So you can you can uh, you can see that uh, that you know I I normally put everything on my GitHub it's, it's public so I I normally blog in in dev two so this is where I blog and uh, this is this is uh, at the moment you know everything is here you can see you can have it and <clears throat> all is infrastructure as a code uh, and I have like a lot of CVs out here. I have a security CV which I've started recently. I have a Terraform, I have troubleshooting, I have architecture, I have the directions. Uh, there's also CVs for ops and DevOps. <clears throat> so uh, depending upon which category I'm writing or maybe when I'm working, I find that you know, something is really uh, good enough to share with uh, the world. I normally do that. So you can find, uh, you can you can have a look out here. So for each of my topic, uh, what I do is I create a repository. Um, so I, I normally create a repository out here, and and after the repository, you know, I put my code. For example, like uh, like catalog and access packages, the the one. So I spoke like you know this year I spoke in um, Azure Spring Clean. So uh, this is how I maintain. So you can find the code out here, the complete code. So this is the whole code you will find out here, uh, which uh, ideally in your environment, you have to just change few values and it should run. And then I, I put, put uh, I whatever I blog, that is also version control. So whatever you see here, uh, you will also see it in my GitHub. So I also document or uh, uh, the blog which I'm writing, that is also version control. So this is how I maintain it uh, in my things. So for everything, you can have it. For uh, for any things you know, which uh, for example, which is uh, 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 the sessions which I give, and if it is recorded, so that is also a part of uh, uh, a part of my weekly documentations and everything. So you can see that you know anywhere which I have spoken, uh, wherever I have spoken, so all the YouTube videos are linked out here, and it's a similar fashion you know, which like you know today's my topic is. Is, is you know, mapping of this Azure DevOps runtime variables to Terraform input variables to see that you know, I have already put it into that. You know, this is the uh, this is what I'm presenting in first. So, um, so again, going back to my GitHub repository, so you can find me in uh, in blog uh, in Dev.2. You can find me in LinkedIn, Twitter. You can also find me in Sessionize, Facebook, anything. So this is my Sessionize profile. Uh, where I, I normally apply for all the speaker sessions. It is also uh, today, uh, wherever I do, I update here as well. So this is a little bit about my Twitter profile. And of course, this is my LinkedIn, uh, where you know, whenever I'm, I'm posting a blog or speaking somewhere, you know, uh, I normally put uh, as much as detail as possible so that you know, can 
benefit from that. Now, the only thing, you know, so I'm, I'm basically blogging and basically speaking for close to like, uh, like you know, like five, six years now. Uh, with Azure, I started blogging a year back. And uh, just to just for everybody to know that um, I have recently applied for my MVP. Uh, so I submitted my application eight for sample. I'm still waiting. I don't know whether I selected or not. Just be hopeful. So this is about me. And why I say about the citizen of the world is because you know I've traveled a lot, uh, both personally and uh, professionally. So total, like you know, uh, with my personal and professionally, I have visited uh, 22 countries till date. And I have worked in, I started working from Kuwait and then I worked in Dubai. Uh, and after that, I moved to Hungary after, from Hungary to Zurich. Zurich to New York, New York to Baltimore, Baltimore to Canada, and then back to Switzerland. So this is the, because I was working in managed services in a lot of customer platforms, so I traveled a lot. And uh, I learned a lot from that. So uh, this is a little bit about myself. And uh, now I will immediately jump into my topic. Uh, which is like, you know, how uh, mapping of the Azure DevOps runtime uh, variables to Terraform input variables. So uh, a little background, background about this, that, you know, how I, I came up with this topic. It was mostly like, you know, if somebody has worked in Terraform, uh, there is always like a variable, uh, there's a variable file and there is also a TF parse file. The variable file is where you're defining that what is the type of the variable, whether it's an array, whether it's a string, uh, whether it's a boolean, whether it's a map. Uh, so you define the variable out there, but again, you know, uh, in order to uh, put the value, so it's, it's just like a key value pair. So you define a variable and then you uh, you put a value to that variable. So that value is in TFRs. And then all of a sudden, you know, I was reading one of the documentation that was, uh, I was reading this documentation of environmental variables. And there they wrote that, uh, Terraform or HashiCorp, they wrote that uh, you can, you don't have to define the value, um, you don't have to define the value in the TFRs file, but you can always use as an input variable from your YAML pipeline. And that gave me the use case that, okay, what happens if like, you know, I'm, I'm writing, like for example, I want to deploy a resource group and I want to deploy a user assigned managed identity. So uh, uh, this is about my blog, of course. So um, then I have to give a name. So I have to define uh, that, okay, uh, there has to be a variable for my resource group and there has to be a variable for my user-defined managed identity. Uh, so uh, for those, you know, I have to again have a uh, value in my TFRs file. What happens if I don't give it? And, you know, I'm not hard coding those values, but, you know, I am asking the user who is executing the pipeline to put the values and then you know that value I'm automatically passing without even defining in the TFRs file. So that is how I came up with this. And this is what I'm going to explain you first a little bit and then I'm going to run a, a live demo uh, so that you can see that you know what all things are happening. So here, um, uh, so uh, this is what I tried to explain as, as what I'm going to demonstrate. So I'm going to map the, the runtime variables to, to input variables. And then, you know, you see that, you know, there is no need of defining the values of the variable in the, in the TFRs file. So uh, scrolling up a little bit, you know, of course, you know, uh, for all these things, you know, I would be requiring a subscription. I would be requiring a DevOps organization, a project. I would be requiring a SPI in the Azure AD. That SPI I need to configure in my DevOps project as service connection because Azure DevOps is one entity, Azure is another entity, and you have to connect those. That is how, you know, when you are going to run the infrastructure as a code, that is how it gets deployed to your Azure portal. So that is the magic which the SPI, which is defined in, um, in the Azure tenant, Azure AD, in your directory services, and that, you know, uh, the object ID or the client ID and the secret then we use in the service connection to point. And then of course, uh, uh, we need the, the Terraform extension. And this Terraform extension has to be the, the Microsoft one because there are a lot of custom Terraform extension as well available in the Visual Studio marketplace. So, um, so again, you know, from, from my blog, you can immediately from here, you can jump to the GitHub repository. And 
of course, you know, just to give a look uh, that you know how my code plays out the looks because you know when I I read others' blog and I see the problems which I face when I'm reading or I'm trying to follow somebody has written something and I'm trying to follow in my real life. Uh, I see the problem and. For me, it's very important to see that anybody who has blogged or has written something, you know, how his local environment looks like. Because then that gives me an idea, that gives me an inkling in my head. I can map it out that, okay, so he developed the whole code like this. So that is why I put the small screenshot showing the audiences that, uh, hey, uh, the way I did it is like I created a folder like USR, USR MID managed entity, and then I have my YAML pipeline, then I have my name.tf, then I have the resource.tf, then I have the TFRs where I'm defining the values, and this is the variable where I'm defining the variables. So people get an idea and kind of thing. And, and then, you know, I'm, I'm setting, the, uh, setting the objective that, okay, what my automation is going to do. So I'm going to define, so I'm going to deploy a small, very small resource group, and I'm going to define a user assigned managed entity inside that resource, resource group, but I'm not going to provide the value in my TFRs. The value is going to come from the runtime variables. And this is, this is why my entire code is here. Uh, and, uh, and this is how it looks like. So I will, what I will do is I will immediately jump into my code so that I can explain you better. So um, when, when, we are, uh, when we are doing this infrastructure as a code or DevOps, uh, it's, it's very essential that you know, we have to understand a few things very important. So your Terraform is your scripting language where you're defining that how and what resources you want to deploy. And your DevOps pipeline is a mechanism which is taking that infrastructure as a code and then helping you push it uh, uh, to, to Azure to, to build those resources. So when we are doing this whole CI, CD, continuous integration, continuous deployment, it is basically like you, know, you are amalgamating two different languages. One is a YAML, another is your Terraform scripting language. And then it, it starts becoming a little bit complex. It's just like Azure, you know, when you're playing with one resource, it's simple. You add another resource on the top, 10% complexity increases. Then you add another two, three resources, another 20% of complexity increases. So it's just like that. So that is why some terminologies has to be understood very, very clearly. The first thing about this whole automation is, um, I'm talking about the runtime variables. What does this runtime variable mean? So this is the pipeline runtime variables I'm talking about. So it means that these are the variables which I'm asking the user who is running this pipeline to put those values. So this is a user input values. These are the pipeline runtime variables. Then there is like my pipeline variables, which is this part. So these are the variables which I'm defining. So this is my key and this is my value. So this is the key value pair. And then you have the environmental variables. The environmental variables are nothing, but it's the, uh, the, the variables which uh, doesn't need. So your entire uh, pipeline, which is running, it needs a compute. That compute is the build agent. That build agent can be a Microsoft hosted agent. It can be a self hosted agent, doesn't matter, but it needs a compute. It cannot run like a magic. So when you are running that pipeline, which is taking the Terraform as your input, so that whole thing is running basically on a VM, which is which we are calling as a build agent. And that VM can have a lot of environmental variables. So that you know when they they want that value, the build agent automatically knows that okay, this is an environmental variable. I don't have to look into Terraform, I don't have to look into Dev, I mean like my YAML pipeline, but I can use that as an environmental variables, so I can use that value automatically. So, so these are the three different concepts. We have pipeline runtime variables, we have the pipeline variables, and then we have environmental variables. So I'm, I'm actually using all the three in my automation. So these are my pipeline runtime variable, these are my pipeline variables, and I very shortly I will come to the environmental variables. Then I have like, you know, 
my build agent. So I have, I'm using the Microsoft hosted one. You can see that you know, I'm using this Windows latest, which is my build agent variable, but this is my value and this is what I'm passing out here. And then what I'm having is I'm having two different stages. One is like plan. So this is my plan that I'm, I'm generating the Terraform plan. And after that, you know, I'm using the stage called deploy, where in the plan stage, when I'm generating the plan that, okay, this is a resource which, get, which will be getting deployed, that plan I'm using in my deploy stage. Okay. So what happens in my uh, plan stage? Before I go here, you can see that, you know, for all these things, for all these things, uh, you know, I have, I have like lowercase, but only for my resource group name variable and for user assigned manager entity, see that I have in caps, why so? So what I'm doing with this is that you see that in my variable section, I have the resource uh, group name, which I have taken a string. I have location, which I have defined a string. I have defined the user assigned manager entity as a string. Now you have defined the variables, but if you go to the, the value, I have only mentioned the location. I have not mentioned the name of the resource group. I have not mentioned the name of the user assigned management entity. So how will Terraform and by proxy, my DevOps pipeline will know that by what name the resource group should be deployed and by what name the user assigned management entity should be deployed. They don't know that because I have not specified here. They, this is just the location. This is where this is coming in picture. So you see in the runtime variable, I'm taking the user input. So user is putting the name of the resource group. And then I have a user is putting the name of the user assigned manager entity. Once they put it, what I'm doing is I'm taking that value and I'm putting it into this one. So basically what I'm doing is I'm capturing the value from the runtime variable and then I am putting into pipeline variables. But when I'm putting into pipeline variables, when I'm putting this whole value as in caps, according to the environmental variables documentation, you see that here Hashikov had mentioned that if you are starting anything, any any variable, if you start with tf underscore var underscore the name of the variable, in my case, it is df underscore var underscore something like uh, amrg, then it automatically converts into the environmental variable. That is why uh, when it maps into my uh, environmental variable, then I am using that environmental variable as the input to my Terraform file. That is how I'm converting it. So this is the whole workflow. And then what I'm doing here is, and my plan stage, I am running the Terraform installer. Then I'm initializing the Terraform out here. Uh, once I'm initializing the Terraform, then I'm validating the Terraform. When I'm validating the Terraform, then I'm generating the Terraform plan out here. Uh, so you can see that the plan is the plan. Then I'm copying the files, everything. And then I'm just putting in my staging directory and publishing as an artifact. Why I'm doing this? Because unless and because this, these are two stages. So whatever I'm doing in this stage, somehow my, uh, my deploy stage has to consume what I have generated in my plan stage. So the only way to consume is in pipelines is you have to publish as, as an artifact. There is no other way. So you have to publish something, then you can cons consume something. It's just like, you know, if anybody has worked on the messaging service, it's just like a pub sub model. You publish something, then you consume something, subscribe something. So then in the deploy stage, what I'm doing is, first, I'm validating, I'm putting a condition like succeeded, which means that my previous stage, which is my plan, has to be successful. Otherwise, they will just deploy this. If something goes wrong here, and it doesn't execute, my deploy stage will be skipped because I have put a condition like succeeded. And then what I'm doing is the first is I'm downloading the artifact. So whatever I have published here, I'm downloading it. Once I download it, then I'm again initializing the Terraform again because this is a separate stage. And then what I'm doing is I'm applying uh, 
this whole thing uh, uh, using the data from plan, which is generated in the plan stage and which I have downloaded from the other fields. And that is how it is getting uh, that the whole thing is run. And if I refer back to my documentation, see that and I have, I have mentioned out here, um, I have put a note about this one, this thing which I explained you. So the user input values from the DevOps runtimes are ref referred to as a DevOps variable. So, so all this, this, the, this is a runtime variable, and this is this has been referenced to the pipeline variables. And then I, I, I explicitly mentioned that notice the variable that you know this is all caps, where I try to explain that Azure DevOps. Uh, variable gets automatically mapped to the environment variables in the Azure DevOps build agent. And then, you know, automatically it, it, it helps me to put it as a Terraform input variables. And this link, which I'm talking about, uh, where if you can read, you know, you can, you can understand a little bit more. This is also referenced in my blog right here. Okay. So, uh, so this is the rest is, the rest is all the same. Uh, in your environment, if you want to run my code, uh, the only thing uh, which you have to change is always this section. There's always like, you know, not this section because, you know, this is a user input, but this is a section which you have to alter because you might be having a different, you might be having a different uh, uh, resource group names and the storage account names. So uh, this is about the YAML pipeline. Now I come to the main file. So the main.tf is the, the main Terraform file. So the way I do it is like, I always use the main TF for storing the backend state file. Uh, this, this is a Terraform state file where, where I keep it. So uh, the first one is the resource group where my storage account exists. Next is my storage account name. Then uh, what is the container name inside my storage account? And then uh, what I do is since I, I run a lot of use cases. Then what I do is whenever I'm running something, I always prepare a folder inside the container just to keep it organized. So this UMID is the folder name, and this is my state file. Then again, you know, uh, first one is the Terraform version, and this is my provider. So I'm using Azure RM, which is the Azure Resource Manager, and I am putting it uh, in the, the version right here. This is the the resource uh, Terraform file where I'm defining that, okay, resource group will be deployed and a user assigned managed identity will be deployed. Uh, I have used, it depends on um, uh, a parameter out here, which says that this piece of code will not start running unless the resource group is created. So this is what is called as the, uh, as the implicit dependency. So, uh, I am creating a depends on parameter which says that, okay, uh, Azure Adam underscore resource underscore group and uh, the name of this one, uh, the module name and the, and the name of the module, I am putting it as a de depends on. So unless and until, even if it is taking like, for example, one minute, this piece of code will wait. So once this gets executed, resource group is ready, then it will be there. So that, you know, it doesn't happen because uh, many a times when I'm running a code, I see that, uh, Terraform doesn't identify and it starts defining the user a user assigned uh, managed identity, but it fails because the resource group doesn't exist. So there is a lot of scenarios which I've seen in that. And this is the variable section which we are defining, and then in the TFRs we are defining the value of the variables which are just um, so this is this is all about the code. Now what I normally do, you know, when I'm running such pipeline is like, you know, I always, uh, as part of the best practices, I always create a folder by the name. So you see that I have a folder up to you. So, um, because then it helps me understand the history of all the pipelines I'm running. And if I go into this folder, which is my uh, current presentation, like you know, runtime variable, Terraform input variable, if I click on this one, then you see the history that how many times I run. I just ran, like, you know, um, like before my presentation, just to be sure that my code is running. And I ran it like, you know, so you can see it. And this is how it looks like. So you have a plan stage, you have a deploy stage, and that is how it do it. The one thing I, uh, I always do is like, uh, if I go back to the code, sorry, 
uh, if I go back to the repo and um, the so one thing I would like to explain you one more is uh, so I have one validation, which is like uh, uh, the plan and the deploy stage. So I have like, you know, the deploy will not work unless and until the plan is successful. But there is also like a approval gate, which I have put. So I'm using this parameter called environment. So what it does in, in the in that uh, people who have used Azure DevOps you know, earlier, they started with classic pipeline. The classic pi pipelines were something like a completely a GUI base. It's a, it's a graphical user interface. So used to define the whole thing, which I'm defining in YAML, uh, you, could, you could do it graphically. And in that graphically, uh, they had the option to add approval, which means that you're running a pipeline and after a certain stage, he cannot go further because there's an approval gate. But when they switched from classic to YAML based pipeline, uh, primarily because they, you know, they wanted to do, the, do uh, Microsoft wanted to do the version control of pipelines as well. That is the main reason, that is the main uh, motivation to move from classic to YAML based. Uh, then this was the piece which was missing. And then Microsoft, what they did is like, you know, they said that, okay, uh, in case if you want to, want to put an approval gate in your YAML based pipeline, you have to use environment. So that is why I have defined you know, environment. And when you go to pipelines, you see the environment section on the left. If you click on the environment section, you see that and I have defined the non-prod. If you click on non-prod and on the right-hand side, three dots, you see approvals and checks. If you click on approval, you see that and I have created an approval. So I have added my name, this is approval. So if you're including that in your YAML pipeline, uh, then it will it will automatically wait till the time it's been approved. So this was the last piece I wanted to say. So I will go back to my folder again. And what I will do is I will simply go here and I will just run. I just run from here because then I will just automatically get the values. I don't have to think of some, some name or something. That is why I, I went for that. Otherwise, you can always go here. Uh, you go to the other one and then you can run the pipeline. So then you know, it will look a little bit different. It will ask you to specify the names. So here you see that you know, I have used my subscription and my service connection. Depending upon your environment, you can always change it. And then I'm asking the user, hey, uh, can you just provide me a resource group name or can you provide me the user assigned managed entity name? Just asking. Also, uh, when you're doing this, you can always click on stages to run. Click on this. This does a validation to, to make you aware that your YAML uh, syntax and everything which you have defined is perfectly okay. So, so there should not be any syntax problem when you're executing your pipeline. But if there is an, any other problem, that would be something different, but there is no syntax problem. So this ensures that. And uh, so I will now fall back here. So this is a pipeline which I previously run. And if I run from here, I'm just getting the value. I'm a little bit lazy out here, just not to define, uh, think of some, some other names or something. So what I will do is now I have my resource group name. So these are my pipeline runtime variables and I'm passing those values. Then I'm going to run it. And now I will just uh, wait. Uh, please bear with me because you know I'm running on Microsoft hosted agent, which means that you know it's a cold VM. So whenever I'm executing, uh, then first it will just allocate me a VM from a pool, then it will spin the VM up, and then it will run. So ideally, it takes uh, a minute or two. So it was pretty much fast. So um, uh, till the time this pipeline is running. Uh, I will just pause for a moment and see if you guys have any questions, and then I will resume uh, once the pipeline is over.
I have a question. I'm not sure if I caught how the back end set up for Airform, but um, I'm not sure. Based on what I see, this probably would would not work on Terraform Cloud as a back so, uh, so the Terraform Cloud is a little bit different than the uh, one which we are associating. So Terraform Cloud gives you the provision of uh, of doing everything. It's it's just like a one front end. Uh, so they have all the functionalities within their their own infrastructure. But here we are using the Terraform extension. So it's 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 basically um, if I go here, uh, if I go to the organization settings, and if you see the extension. So I'm actually availing this extension. So this is coming with the Visual Studio thing, and then I have to incorporate that. When you are running the Terraform init uh, plan and apply without DevOps pipeline, when you're running locally, so there is always a state file which gets stored locally. And then you also have a provision to, uh, to store the file remotely. Uh, in Terraform Cloud, of course, that is there. But uh, when you are using Ter Terraform Cloud, then there is no options of Azure DevOps or GitHub Actions. So Terraform Cloud is providing the whole CI CD as well as the HashiCorp, as well as HCL, as well as uh, the Terraform, the whole package they are offering. So it's the, the nomenclature or the way we are doing here, where we are amalgamating a Microsoft stack and a HashiCorp stack together to build the whole CI CD and the infrastructure as a code. In Terraform Cloud, it is a little bit different. Terraform Cloud, you know, you are running the pipeline there. You are you are using their own languages, so it's it's basically like an OFE. It's just like a one front end. If that makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. So if I go here, um, so this is what I was I was talking about, uh, and now you see that you know it's it's waiting. Uh, this is the approval I was talking about. So. First thing first, you see that um, uh, the best way of, of doing is this, like, you know, the way I have learned uh, with my projects is that, you know, whenever you're writing a pipeline, just define what exactly things are doing. So the first thing is, you know, they are installing the Terraform versions and in each slice in the Terraform, validating, then I'm generating the plan. So this is the plan which I was talking. So here in the plan, you see that uh, our two resources will be getting added. There is no modification done. There is nothing to destroy. Zero to destroy, zero to change, and zero to uh, two to add. So this is what it gives me. And this is the plan which I'm going to use in the deploy stage. But in order to do that, I have to copy the first files to the artifacts uh, staging directory, and then I have to publish the artifacts. Now, before I proceed, I will show you that where the artifacts is. So you see here, this is the artifact. So basically, my pipeline and my Terraform is running inside a VM, which is somewhere in the uh, Microsoft data center. So all the files are there, but how would I consume again? So I have to publish. So that is why I'm copying those things to a DevOps staging directory, and from the DevOps staging directory, I'm publishing as an artifact. So all the code which you saw, main, uh, user, uh, the, the resource file, the DFRs, the variable files, everything, it is putting it in the artifacts along with the, the plan file. And this plan file is basically I'm consuming in my, in my deploy stage. So if I go here, I will do this, I will just say, okay, I approve it. And here you see that I have to put a check approval and you can see the name of the environment which where the approval gate is attached to and then i approve it and now i now my the deploy station start So this got deployed. 
so first thing first, let's uh, check in the portal. Um, normally it will take some time to reflect, but uh, till the time it is uh, getting reflected, I will go to the part where, which is the most important as a state file. So this is my, this is my uh, storage account. And then I have a container for uh, TF pipeline SA, and then I have a Terraform container. And here you see that I have created a folder and inside the folder you see the state file. If you go here and if you edit it, you, know, you can see the entire state file. So the first section, you know, this whole part, this is the, the resource group state. And the next part uh, you will see is like, uh, this is the, the user assigned managed entity state. So this is like, you know, uh, this is very important at the time, you know, if if you have deployed the infrastructure using Terraform and then you know you have manually deleted something, then the next time if you try to deploy, it will not allow you to deploy because because of the state file. Because the state, uh, the state file contents and your and your resource content, this is a mismatch. And then you have to first do the Terraform surgery. You have to remove those all contents and then you have to reapply the Terraform. That is that is why the the state file is so so important. And if I go to the resource group. Um, yep, so this is my resource group, and then you know, this is my user assigned managed entity. So the, the, whole, the whole beauty of this is that I am I'm just asking my user or anybody uh, to provide the appropriate names. I'm not hard coding any values in any of my code. I'm just converting the whole uh, pipeline variables uh, into local variables, local to environmental variables, and from environmental variables, you know, I'm taking those as a Terraform input variables, passing those values, and then uh, then uh, deploying those resources in, in into Azure. So this is this is this is what I, I meant to say that um, that you know without even specifying the values for your variable, you can still deploy. And this is what I I I I, I understood and know about what HashiCorp was trying to explain out here. But you know, feel free to go through this documentation. Feel free to uh, go to my blog, and uh, if you have any questions, to do write to me. Um, so yeah, this is this is all um, I I had to present for today. So you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. <clears throat> uh, so feel free to come off of uh, off of mute and uh, pose any questions that you've got. Well, so, sometimes uh, sometimes uh, demonstrations are so clear that people just know. Uh, <laughs> so uh, so that uh, don't be shocked. Um, uh, well, we'll give it one more minute uh, to see if anybody has any uh, questions. Feel free to type them in or uh, come off mute and and ask away. While we're waiting for that, uh, I'll uh, I'll make a couple of quick announcements. Uh, this um, recording will show up on the Boston Azure YouTube channel. So you can find that at youtube.com slash Boston Azure. And also I mentioned at the beginning of this that there would be uh, that we have a couple of uh, we, we still have some virtual events coming or whole pipeline coming. So watch the either the North Boston Azure or the Boston Azure, either one uh, meetup space for that. And there are two in person events coming to. Uh, Boston Azure. So uh, one of them is the Boston Boston edition. Uh, Jason Veronica and I and um, we'll, we've we've are working on that and we've uh, sent out a call for speakers. Just uh, I think Veronica kicked it out um, just uh, in the last day or so. And um, that's Saturday, May 13th at Nerd in Cambridge. And then we have one also tentatively scheduled in late April. Um, for in person on a weekday night that so watch the space the usual spaces for those the meetup sites and twitter um, 
And I will come back to, uh, has anybody, anybody want to take advantage of the last moment to uh, pop a question? Okay, well, that, that's, um, that's cool. Um, I, uh, I wish to uh, thank everybody for attending uh, and it's uh, uh, pretty late <laughs> um, uh, in um, uh, Switzerland, right? You're in Switzerland? Yes. What time, what time is it right now? It's uh, one in the morning. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Arundam Mitra, thank you very yeah. much for being our speaker, for staying up to one in the morning to uh, entertain our, uh, our our crew, and uh, we'll we'll see you all at the next uh, event, everybody. Uh, Jason or Veronica, did you have any uh, any closing remarks, or uh, or uh, Arundam, do you have any uh, any any uh, closing remarks? No, thank you so much, Bill, again uh, for the opportunity. Uh, uh, I. I wish you guys all the best, and uh, I hope that I would again get an opportunity to uh, collaborate with you. And uh, Jason, for you, uh, feel free to drop me an email for your podcast. Happy to happy to join that as well. Will do. Thanks, man. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Good. Good night, okay. everybody. Take care. Yeah. Yeah. See you. Bye. Bye. -bye.